In this video I'm going to talk about how to win the Zed vs RE matchup. I'm a Challenger Zed main on EU West who peaked 1200 LP this season. If Zed matchup guides and montages interest you, do subscribe since I'll be making those kind of videos for now. I also stream Grandmaster Challenger MMR EU West Zed gameplay on Twitch. Feel free to check out the description for that. For the format of this video I'll first give my thoughts on the best runes and summoners to take and why. After that I'll talk through some tips and tricks you can utilize throughout the game, starting from level 1 and going upwards. Finally I'll talk about the best skill max order and item builds against Ori and wrap up my final thoughts. But let's get into it. For runes, I think that first strike is the best. Um, Conqueror is not as good in my opinion because of her W and her E and her ult which makes it so that it's kind of hard to stick to her and keep the stacks and sort of like fully utilize the Conqueror stacks to kill her. So in terms of the 1v1 I feel like it's not it's not that good. Um, Ari is a squishy champion though so that also means that Electrocute is, is viable. Um, I wouldn't because I don't like Electrocute. So for the sake of this video I'm gonna say first strike is the best. But Con uh, Electrocute is also fine and Conqueror is like not as good in my opinion. Um, also but like uh, Electrocute I just don't like it on Zed but other players that play Zed like to go Electrocute. Um, right now I think, you know, I think on Zed is going like Umbral Glaive with Electrocute, so you can try that, but for me, I'm just gonna go First Strike. So we go First Strike, which obviously First Strike, and then Magical Footwear, because it's the best one here. Uh, you get free boots, so that's pretty good. This is These two are like really useless. Beauty's Market, you can go Minion Dematerializer, <coughs> but... I think Futures is still better even after the nerf, although against Ari you can go this and then you would use the minion dematerializers on the cannons uh, to shove the cannon wave faster. Um, that's a decent strategy, but I think just getting your items earlier in the mid game is, is better. Um, and then Cosmic Insight here is, is the best one there. Uh, so you just take that. For the secondary runes there are multiple options you can go. I like to go sorcery with transcendence and scorch. So transcendence for the uh, when you finish Hydra, you have a decent amount of haste. You have a, a bit more than usual, so it's it's a bit everything's a bit smoother. Uh, w E Q into queuing again, smoother. Scorch is pretty good pretty good against Ari because she's like squishy uh, health wise. She doesn't have much health, so scorch actually deals some good damage early game, and you know even in the mid game, it's it's like kind of decent ish. Um, Another setup you can go is, is this, because Ari likes to roam sometimes. You can take Demolish with Bone Plating. Bone Plating against her because she usually has Electrocute. That could help. And the Demolish to push towers if you really want. But I go these runes. And then Adaptive, Adaptive and MR for the runes. If you do go Demolish, it's worth noting that Minion Dematerializer is likely better. Because it would help you shove the Cannon Wave if Ari roams on a Cannon Wave then you'd much more likely get the plating. For runes, I like to go Flash and Ignite. Uh, don't go Ghost unless you have Conqueror, in my opinion, in any matchup. Um, I think Flash and Ignite against Ori is the best. Uh, you know, you could use your Flash to follow her one of her ults. So, you know, let's say level 6 fight, you know, you ult her, she has no charm or something, you auto E, she ults, and then you can like Q flash auto, something like that, right? In between her ults, because there's like a little delay between her every time she can jump, right? You can sort of use flash against that. It helps a lot in that sort of scenario, but also in general, flash is always going to be good in uh, in ranked solo queue against champs. Um, and then ignite, because she has not much health, which means she's very killable in my opinion. He's very squishy in that sense. So Ignite is going to be good against that. Uh, you can go Flash and Teleport as well if you really, um, you know, if you if you want to really play safe and just play for the full scaling, it's a definitely an option against Ari since she's a champion you outscale uh, quite swiftly or you know quite gradually, but um, eventually you're going to outscale her. Uh, probably like. After first item, you start outscaling her quite quickly actually, so that is an option if you want to do flash and teleport, but I go flash and ignite, and I think it's best. So for this video, we'll say flash and ignite. That is for all Zed versus ranged matchups. 
the first three waves is you basically don't want to let them push the first three waves all at once so you're going to have to play this sort of game where you you know play in and out of their range um so that you re-aggro the minions you know as usual so they only crash one or two waves uh, against good players that's what you have to do bad players will always just push either the first wave or just push the second wave in as well um so in that case you don't you don't have to worry uh, against Ari it's quite tricky because her W allows her to proc Electrocute very easily just because of, you know, it gives her an attack for the Electrocute and it gives her movement speed so she can auto and if she's in auto range she's always going to proc Electrocute uh, with her W movement speed and then another auto. So you have to be careful to not be in her auto range and sort of play a bit like further back and if you're going to let her auto attack you, you know, you need to know that or take into account that she is going to proc Electrocute before you allow her to auto attack you if that makes sense and when she does that then the wave will push towards you so that will be good for the first three waves level two i usually like leaving w instead of e because usually you can't walk towards the minions anyways um so if i do level e second like i did here it's probably just to help me cs under the tower um but usually you want to go w second uh just to avoid her electrocute proc since that you can sort of trade your w for her w in a sense um, to avoid the electrocute proc but still you know have the minions re -aggro. so that's how you want to play the first sort of three levels and once you get level three you'll have all spells you still probably don't want to use your w forwards um, it's better to wait till level four in my opinion level four level five and then onwards you start to start ramping up uh, a lot more damage than the re um, on your Qs if you hit them raw right uh, so waiting for that is good if Ari has W up and she's in her minions, don't bother using W E Q on her because your Qs are not going to deal much damage through the minions. So just hold your W in those in that case. Otherwise, if she's sort of on the sides of the lanes and there's no minions, um, a good trading pattern you can do against Ari is just walk up W E. She's going to use her W. You can try to Q her. You'll probably hit one Q. Um, it doesn't matter if you hit both. If you hit both, then that's great. Um, but basically, she's going to try to use her Q and her charm on you, right? So you're going to want to sort of stand out in the open, try to make her, try to bait out her charm. But then you want to watch her for her charm animation. Because if she charms, then you can use your W to jump over the charm. Uh, it's a bit similar to the Syndra matchup. Um, but you also want to walk side to side to dodge her Q because she might use her Q first. And, you know, good Aries are going to sort of hold their charm and, and make it harder for you. But... I mean, a lot of the Aries just throw out the charm uh, straight away because uh, you're sort of going to be out in the open baiting her in, baiting it out. But, you know, you have your W2 to jump to. You jump over the W2 and then you can auto attack, you know, try to extend the trade a little bit. And then, you know, you're going to have to walk away because she doesn't have, you know, unless she's low enough, then you'll kill her. But usually you'll have to walk away and that's the end of the trade. And you'll usually win those trades because you jump over her charm and you get some autos in. This trading pattern is really good because even if she holds her charm you can judge whether or not you want to just go in and tank the charm so if you hit both of your cues you probably want to go in and auto just tank the charm because you'll likely win the trade anyways but if you don't hit your cues then you can just choose to not go in um so this is like a i think this trade is really good especially pre-6 um you know where she can't just ult you and punish you for that after level six you still want to do this trade uh, but only when the wave is on your side of the lane or the, la the wave is even and you have enough space to sort of run away uh, taking into account her ult by this time you'll probably have a pickaxe and a double longsword or warhammer and longsword so you'll have a decent amount of AD um, so your Qs will do good damage Ares usually don't want to go seekers because it delays their everfrost so you'll have a bunch of kill pressure I think if you do bait out her charm in one of these trades, don't be afraid to take the W and alter, um, you know, and just try to chase her down with auto E ignite if you judge that she's low enough for you to kill her. Um, you know, even if she has ult, you can still quite usually, like, unless they time it extremely correctly, which is kind of not really possible, you're going to get your auto E ignite in, right, like, after ulting, and then you can maybe flash to follow or not flash do take into account that each Ari dash has a delay between them where she can't dash so if she for example if you alter 
and she charms you and then she you know she jumps that's fine you walk away a bit but then she jumps back into you you know if you expect that then you can get the weq in right like right as you see her jump you know exactly where she's going to land in in most cases right so you can always you know you can always react quite quickly if that's you know something in your mind before she you know, uses her second dash to jump back into you to poke you more you can weq really quickly and then you can easily get an auto attack in before she has to you know before she can w again or alt again away i mean if you do these things successfully then the army will pretty much melt and die but you don't have to right because you're going to outscale her anyways so you can just chill out and, and just farm up you know after you get hydro you want to only use your q and e to clear waves and hold your w just in case if ari is uh you know let's say she got the push and then for the next wave she's going to be in fog you don't know if she recalled or if she's in the bush you know you just want to hold your w for that um don't waste it otherwise she'll try to run you down with alt so that's a good way to play after hydra and then in the mid game in the side lanes um you're going to want to push the waves in. You're going to have the advantage again now because you have some items. Um, you can pretty much kill her really easily, but you have to do it right. So you're going to want to push the side lanes in, and then it's your turn to sort of go into fog. Um, you know, you can track her path. She's going to have to come and match the wave. You can sort of see where she's going. You know, take things slowly. Um, and then, you know, you crash the wave, you go into fog, and then she's going to walk into fog as well, maybe. You can catch her out in the jungle. She's still going to be pretty squishy. Um, it, you know, you'll be pretty menacing, so you'll be able to get her ult out, usually, with just your WEQ. If you go in at the right time, or she's, like, trying to rotate somewhere. And then if you get her ult out, then you should just back out. Uh, if she has no ult, obviously you can kill her with your ult. You know, in the mid game, that's how you want to play in the side lanes. Uh, instead of just 1v1ing her straight up, you want to use the fog to your advantage in that way. You know, try and catch her out where she's walking around and stuff. It's, I think it's much more, or well, much less predictable, uh, much easier to pull off. Other than that, in the late game, you want to play with your team because I think you're much more uh, stronger than Ari in the team fights. So playing with your team is a good idea. Um, you know, Ari is going to look to pick people off, but in the pure 5v5, you should be much stronger. You can also look for flanks as well in the team fights, and that will be pretty good. That's pretty much it for the tips and tricks, so let's move on to items. For the starting items, I go longsword refillable, but you can go longsword three potions. It's pretty good in this matchup because Ari's poke is pretty annoying. Um, Doran shield is an option as well if you want to uh, sort of stay in lane for longer, uh, but I don't think that's usually worth it. It's usually better to just you know, have a bit less sustain and then, you know, recall on 750 gold or 875 gold for either Warhammer or Pickaxe. Um, so that's the sort of beginning of the game. And then obviously you want to go Hydra first so that uh, you can't get caught out once you get Hydra. Because, as I said earlier, you clear the waves without using W and that's very nice. Then you want to go Duskblade second. Uh, usually against Ari, even if you're ahead, you want to go Duskblade second. Um, in other matchups, you'd go Hydra second if you're ahead, but I think uh, because Ari is really squishy, um, you can really one-shot her, and it, you know, with more damage, it's a lot easier due to her W, E, and Alt. Like those spells sort of help her get away. But if you have enough burst, she'll just melt and die. So that's what I like to do. Uh, it's the same sort of th thought process with Grudge next. Um, you know, these wounds are. These runes and items go well together too, so it's fine. Even though you're going to be squishy, so you have to take that into account. And then you go Cleaver after that. And last, I usually go Edge of Night, Serpents, or... Uh, yeah, Edge of Night, Serpents. Usually last. You can also go Edge of Night earlier, because Ari has her Everfrost and her Charm. So it's viable to buy that uh, after Hydra and Duskblade. If you want to go Edge of Night, then you can do that. Or you can get it after Grudge. You know, there's a lot of... Um, there's a lot of things you can do, but the main thing is hi rushing Hydra first and going Duskblade second, in my opinion. For the skill max order, you always want to max Q first, and then after that you have multiple options. Uh, you can choose to put, you know, two points into your E and then max W, um, or you can choose to straight up max E and then W. 
but you can also do what I do, which is I always max W second, pretty much in all the matchups. But against Ari, she's very she's quite squishy, so maybe if she doesn't go uh, Zonya second, then max E. If she does, then max W. Um, it's really like you you can choose, right? Um, it's it's not that big of a deal though. I just love W max second, so that's what I do. And obviously you want to level your ult whenever you can. And that's basically it for the skill max order. So in summary, I think Ari is in general pretty easy if you do things correctly. Um, you know, early on, you don't want to take too much poke. And then, you know, mid to late game, uh, fighting her, you usually don't want to just fight her straight up. Uh, you want to use creative ways with the fog to find fights because she has Everfrost, W, E, Ult, Sonya's. You know, these things help her get away. Um, other than that, you'll be scaling up much better, so you just want to scale up and play for the team fights where it becomes a lot easier. I guess taking all of these things into account, I would say that Ari is sort of like a medium skill matchup um, that can sort of go either way. But uh, yeah, that's basically it for this video. I hope it was useful, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.